warriors i hope you're having a great day it's been a minute since i had a chance to talk to you all i actually have covid which kind of stinks not really thrilled about it but i'm hanging in there and i'm a little tired just moving slowly and a little pale today um but i was thinking about some of the past videos and i wanted to kind of uh tick and tie some of the things we started to talk about so you know we are all parents who have kids um, because we've learned from our parents. We've learned things that are good and things that we don't want to do, but at the end of the day, everyone's just doing the best they can. I wanted to tell you a little bit about how I evolved into some of my parenting styles, having a kid who has the same disease profile as I do and having to take him to surgery many, many times. So just for context, I told you about the surgery I had on my ankles when I was seven and my parents who were young and not really equipped to be dealing with this, stood over me in a bed and were sobbing uncontrollably before I went to surgery. That was big surgery. They knew it was going to be horrible. I was going to be in a lot of pain. And they just couldn't hold their stuff together. And at a very early age, I think that was like the minute, I learned that if I was funny, I would stop people from crying. And so one of the coping mechanisms that I've developed is in a crisis when things are bad, when I fall or have to have surgery, I actually can be hilarious. And I can be hilarious because I don't want people to be sad, which is not always the greatest thing, but it has been functional for me. My father will tell you that I am particularly hilarious in an ER when I'm looking at going into an ICU. So the reason why I tell you that is they stood over me sobbing and I was seven and I just figured out a way to be chatty to make them feel better. And then I remember when they wheeled me into the hallway for the surgery and the surgery was delayed and I was alone in that hallway by myself for I think over an hour till the operating room opened and I talked to everyone who walked by. I said hello to everybody. And afterwards, my parents talked about how everyone came out and said, oh, your daughter's so friendly. But I was scared, and for me, being chatty helps when I'm scared. Let's fast forward to being a parent with a kid with the same health issues as I have. For me, as the mom, the thing that's most important, and probably from that moment, is that I never want him to feel scared when he goes to sleep before surgery. I just, I don't want that. I think it's better for our children to feel happy and confident and comfortable I can tell you that I learned things that I would do and wouldn't do. I would never cry over him before he had surgery, no matter how I felt inside. I always smiled. I always laughed. I always told jokes. We watched a funny movie the night before. I never want him to go to sleep for surgery thinking that I'm upset or that things aren't going to be fine. I'm just not going to do that to him. I'm the parent and I will not put my stuff onto him. He had big surgery when he was in high school where they cracked all the vertebrae in his spine and put in rods. His spine had kind of curved over while he was growing. It was big surgery, 14 hours, and there was a possibility he wasn't going to survive. And I was a wreck in the two weeks leading up to that. I cried in the shower. I cried in the car, but never, ever in front of him. And for me, I think there is something about holding your stuff together as a parent. Because I'm a clinical social worker who's worked in hospitals, I'm able to go in the operating room with him. I've been there every single time he's been intubated. Every single time I tell him I love him, I am not crying. I tell him I will be there in a minute and we will be together and it's fine. Before this spine surgery, which was really a big deal, um, I knew he was going to be breathing on a ventilator after the surgery. And so we had this deal that when he woke up, if he blinked once, that meant no. If he blinked twice, it meant yes. I promised him that I wouldn't leave until he was off the ventilator. And so I was terrified. I mean, I wasn't sure if I was saying goodbye to my child. But I was very funny. And he watches my face. He's got a PhD in me. And we went into the operating room. And for the first time, there was a different table than I had ever seen before. It was not a regular surgical table. It was these kind of discs that were three or four discs that they could move while they're cracking someone's spine and putting the rods in. And I hadn't been warned about it. I didn't know what it was. So for one second, I lost my composure, just like for a, literally a split second. And he said, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I said, nothing. Everything's fine. 
I was so great. I said, buddy, you're going to close your eyes. And when you wake up, I'm going to be there. Now, I have to tell you that before the surgery, he said, could I die? And I said, you could, absolutely. I said, but there's a team of people working so that that doesn't happen. And I'm not worried. And while it's a possibility, I need you to hear from me. You're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. So right before they put him to sleep, he grabbed me and he said, am I going to die? And I said, you're not. You're going to close your eyes. And as soon as you open your eyes again, I'm going to be there smiling over you. And we're going to do this together. And I told him I loved him and they put him to sleep. Even when I tell you about it, I want to cry. But I held it together because he was scared and I wasn't going to allow him to go to sleep for what could have been his last minute. In fear, I just wasn't going to do it. I'm the parent, I'm the adult, and I owe that to him. So I guess why I tell you this is because none of this is easy for any of us. It's not easy as the kid. It's not easy as the parent. And that when you go out in the world and you have all these health issues, things like people not helping you and not holding doors open and people not being sensitive to your disabilities, you feel more raw because you've been through so much and they're things that no one knows about. And so I do think it's important to kind of find ways to best cope with it. Obviously talking about it's great. Every time my child's had surgery, there is a great um, journaling um, capability called Caring Bridge that you can open up and you can write notes to your whole family and tell them what's going on so you don't have to man 4 million phone calls. And for me, it's a place to be a little bit sarcastic and funny and it was great and it helped a ton. And, you know, set things up for yourself. I'm really good about communicating and that's great. Journaling is great for some people. And I just think that it's important to find people who have gone through difficult things and talk about it. And I also just kind of want to tie it into it's the world is hard when you have disabilities and health issues. And sometimes if you can just give people an extra smile, just an extra minute, everyone's doing the best that they can do. No one's perfect. It's not easy. None of this is easy. But I do think it is incredibly kind in a world where all of our bodies are going to change and we're all going to need things at some point to be supportive of one another. So that, those are my moments of uh, lucidity today with COVID. I uh, got through this without a lot of coughing, which I'm happy about. I did name the dragon, though, in case anyone wants to know. This is Dalton, Dalton the dragon. Um, it, there was a bunch of people who weighed in on it, and we thought that Dalton was a good name. So Dalton will be sitting here with me. And all I want to say is, warriors, go slay dragons. The world is tough. I am so in awe of how... So many people with disabilities and health issues navigate and the grace and the dignity by which they live their lives. It is really so inspiring to me every single day. And I'm very grateful and feel gracious about the opportunity to talk about it. So again, warriors, go slay dragons. Again, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Cheryl. I'm a disabled adult. And we're here to just talk about what life is like and the challenges and all the beauty and all the amazing parts of life and how we can all do this together. I hope you are all having a great day and I will talk to you soon. Wear your mask, get your COVID vaccine. Bye-bye.